Well, that and that's your first yeah. time back on the on the YouTube in a while. That's that's right. First time back. Yeah. First of all. And what's the, what's the reason for this, Nick, going on the YouTube? Well, uh, you know, I'm sure you heard I I was canned by serious. Uh... <laughs> well, I didn't know how to enter into like. So tell us about the firing. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, I I tweeted something that didn't sit well with them apparently. Uh, it, I, it, ironically, it didn't get me in trouble on on Twitter. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, next thing I know, I get a call from my agent and go, yeah, and I could tell in his voice, uh, we got a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I go, yeah, we've had this conversation eight times, but, uh, yeah. So they thought it was a hanging offense. I personally thought, you know, maybe suspension at, at best, but, uh, these are the days we live in. I don't hold any grudges against Sirius. I mean, uh, am I disappointed and a little angry at him right now? Yeah. But they're like any other corporation. They seem to fall, fold under pressure. Yeah, and, I, don't, I don't understand it, though. They knew what they were getting with Nick DiPaolo. I mean, Nick, your body of work is so extensive. And if you don't, I'm going to read the tweet. I don't, uh, we were talking about this off air when people, they've done this before we showed up, like in Illinois. Well, we don't agree with everything Stephen says. Well, then shut up. Go I don't care. I don't need it's to off. sit. For, and by the way, I don't have any problem with what Nick DiPaolo tweeted out. No. So his tweet was, uh, dear future, we have a dear future school shooters, please confine yourself to college campuses, specifically faculty lounges at Berkeley, Fresno State, et cetera. That's my <laughs> Nick DePaul impression. That's funny. That's what it was. It was where I think I, I, I say poorly, poorly worded when I said confine yourself to college campuses. I shouldn't, have, you know, that part might have, they're like, you know, I, I could have left the college campuses out. I could have just said faculty lounges at Berkeley, but ba, 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 maybe. Yeah, I but, think but they would have made the inference, Nick. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It, it was so hypersensitive. If you read it like that, it dawned on me on the way home, like 24 hours later. I'm like, uh, that part might have been, well, he's encouraging. We have to get over this mentality that you put a tweet out like that. That means somebody's going to do something. Right. We have to get over that. You make a gay joke. That means a gay guy's going to get beat up tonight. Right. We have to get the f over that mentality. Yeah, well, I, you know, did you just see, we talked about this yesterday, uh, the Simpsons' Hank Azaria apologized for Apu, the character, because the, I didn't mean for it to ever hurt anyone. I think the most important thing is to listen. listen. Have you always thought that, Nick? The most important thing as a stand-up comedian is to listen? And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> like, That's our job, yeah. to listen. We're psychologists. I'm a stand-up, which means I shoot my mouth off for an hour when I'm, and, and then I do a radio show. I shoot my mouth off for another. What makes you think I even want to listen to anybody? Uh, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, all my jobs, in, all my jobs involve me controlling the conversation. So, but but when you apologize like that, you're empowering the the PC people, are you not? It, no, that's exactly what I said yesterday. You know what you're doing? You're empowering. Let's think of it as a stand-up room. And you, you tell me if you agree with this or not. But this was kind of the analogy I used. The rest of the room is laughing. The Simpsons. Immensely successful. Yeah. People are not offended. HuffPo gets offended. This Indian comedian who claimed to be a comedian made a documentary complaining about it. I don't know who he yeah. is. Um, that's a heckler. And you've now given the heckler in the crowd as much legitimacy as the comedian saying, no, 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 hold on, hold on. I want to hear why he's booing. He has right. the right to be heard. I don't think they do. That's how I see it. Not in a comedy club, they don't. They can, you know, they can voice their displeasure on social media or whatever. But yeah, no, absolutely not. Not, in the, not I... in the cartoon realm either. Not in the comedy no, not... adult cartoon realm. <laughs> do we care? Right, right. I mean... <sighs> No, I agree. You you empower them with the with the apology, and I I just don't. Uh, it, it's just odd. I didn't uh, I didn't really get in trouble on Twitter, and and um, you yeah. know I took it down fairly quickly. So oh, that's I, why you took I, it down. That was your mistake. I hate to say it. That was your mistake. You take it's like a T Rex. Their vision is based on movement, and if you take it down, like oh oh, what went down? And they go into the time machine, and then they yeah, let you have it. I, I guess so, because I still got canned. So I guess if I left it up there. What would, I, would they hang me? No, I just think they would have been like, oh, okay, that's Nick. That's like, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's really tough to gauge what, with those things. I, I mean, I, well, they, yeah, go ahead. You're right. And here's what makes it a little more complicated. Uh, there's a couple of theories that, look, my contract was up in a couple of weeks. Right. With that. So I, there's a one theory, like my, my agent believes, and I just made it easy for them with that tweet. It, let's say they didn't want to renew me. I don't think they thought the show was going to get as popular as it did, as quick as it did. It was immensely popular for people who and, don't and know. Remember, I started at 6 p.m. and after a few months, they moved me to eight. 
which tells me they might have been a little scared right there. Right. It might have been too rough for their style. So they moved me to AP. Again, this is all <laughs> speculation on my part. But 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 it sort of makes sense. Uh, either way, wh whether they fired me because of the tweet or they weren't going to renew me anyways because of my politics, either way, it's because of my, I believe it's, because the show was a little too rough for them. Yeah, well, no, I think I think Maybe. it's more about your politics. Everyone knows, you know, Nick DiPaolo's rough. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah your politics. Because here's the deal. Yeah. I don't think anyone's offended by dirty, right? They get to Just for Last when they right. have the, the nasty show. It's the nasty right. show. Someone's going to talk about the their vagina. Genre. But the second you start talking about some things that make people uncomfortable politically, I mean, genuinely politically incorrect, which you do. I don't want to label right. you a conservative. I just think you're an anti-authoritarian, brilliant comic. I think that's what they have a problem with more. I don't think they were surprised at the roughness. I think they were surprised at how outspoken you were uh, politically and culturally. That's what bothers them. That's what well, advertisers shy away from. Well, leaning leaning right, you right. mean, with my club. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that. Again, I'm not I, I, I'm not bitter at serious. I don't want to get mad at these. They gave me an opportunity. I'm going to use it as a springboard, Right. Uh, this this opportunity, because, come on, this is, I'm going to go to work for myself. And, and, uh, right. And, uh, you know, even Joe Rogan texts me saying how angry he was, you know, and, uh, a few other people. So, and then he and, offered and you some DMT. Of, <laughs> well, yeah. It'll it, open your mind to the possibilities of what you can I do. Would I do an Advil PM and I'm screwed up. I don't come back. <laughs>